Welcome back for more Wild Science with H-E-B. In a previous episode, we talked about how animals are divided into two groups and introduced you to some of the vertebrates you can find at the zoo. This week, we'll be talking about another group of animals known as invertebrates. Hi, my name is Abby, and what is an invertebrate? An invertebrate is an animal without a backbone. Invertebrates make up approximately 97% of animals in the world, which means there are millions of species. There are six groups of invertebrates, annelids, porifera, nidiria, echinoderms, mollusks, and the group we'll be focusing on today, arthropods. All arthropods have a hard exoskeleton segmented bodies, and jointed appendages. In fact, the word arthropod itself translates to jointed foot. Arthropods are the most abundant of the invertebrates and most well known. Because there are so many of them, scientists have broken them up into four groups. The first group we'll talk about are the arachnids. My name is Bishopolikis, and what is the arachnid? Arachnids are the group of animals that consist of spiders, scorpions, ticks, and mites. All arachnids have two body segments and eight jointed legs, plus additional appendages that they use for eating, mating, and self-defense. We have several species of arachnids at the zoo, including this beautiful Mexican red-kneed tarantula. Tarantulas and most spiders have eight eyes that allow them to see in several directions at once. However, even with all these eyes, their vision is poor, only allowing them to make out light and dark shapes. This is why they also have special hairs at the end of each of their legs to help them detect vibrations, sounds, and even scents. Most New World tarantulas like this one are also covered in tiny hairs known as urticating hairs, which are barbed and mildly venomous. They use these hairs as a form of self-defense. When threatened, it will use its hind legs to kick hairs off its abdomen, causing pain and intense inflammatory reactions to whoever comes in contact with them. Another arthropod that uses hairs to sense their surroundings would be crabs, which are crustaceans. Hi, my name is Agus. What's a crustacean? Crustaceans are an aquatic member of the arthropod family. They consist of animals like crabs, lobsters, shrimp, and even wood lice and barnacles. One of several crustaceans you'll find at the Russell Aquatic Ecology Center here at the zoo is the giant red hermit crab. It is the largest species in the Western Atlantic Ocean. They can grow upwards of 11 inches, big enough to occupy a fully grown conch shell. Unlike other arthropods, crustaceans are adapted for aquatic life, which means they all have gills. Crabs also have additional appendages in the form of claws or pincers. They use these appendages for feeding and self-defense. The size of the pincers differ between males and females. Males usually have larger pincers to be able to defend their territory and fight for females. Like all arthropods, this crab has a hard exoskeleton and jointed appendages. But unlike the arachnids, they also have antennae. Another group of arthropods with antennae are insects, which make up the largest percentage of arthropods. Insects, like this giant cave cockroach, all have a pair of antennae and six legs. Many, but not all insects also have wings. The giant cave cockroach is one of the largest cockroaches in the world and can grow up to four inches long. They can have between 20 to 34 babies, which are called nymphs. The nymphs are wingless until they reach adulthood. Even though they have large wings, they are too heavy for flight. While they may not be the prettiest, 
Cockroaches play an important role in many ecosystems because they help break down organic matter into nutrients for the soil, which in turn helps plants grow. The last group of arthropods are also responsible for cycling nutrients back into the soil. They are the myriapods. A myriapod is an arthropod with a long body that is made up of numerous segments, each with one or two pairs of legs. Myriapods include millipedes and centipedes. This Texas red-headed centipede can have either 21 or 23 segments. Each segment has a pair of long, jointed legs. In total, they can have either 42 or 46 legs and can reach up to 9 inches when fully grown, making them the largest centipedes in North America. These venomous critters prefer moist, humid environments and can be found living under rocks, logs, and leaf litter. Myriapods are beneficial because they feed on organic matter, but are also carnivorous and can rid gardens of harmful pests. We hope you've gained a new appreciation for all of these crawly critters. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss an episode of Wild Science with HEB. See you next time!